The Free Enterprise Society was formed over 30 years ago by a group of individuals who were very concerned about the simultaneous expansion of bureaucracy, erosion of individual rights, and plunder of private wealth by slick government debt and taxing schemes. Their mission is to promote free enterprise worldwide and restore lost liberties and freedoms in America under the organic National Constitution of the Republic of the United States of America. To further their goals, the Free Enterprise Society arranges training and seminars to educate the people across the country. Shalene Nightingale, Constitution Party Candidate for California Governor. She represents a person who will stand up to the open border federal government and stand up for California rights under the Tenth Amendment. Back in 2006, she was the campaign manager for third-party gubernatorial candidate Art Oliver. During the campaign, they were invited to the late, great Aaron Russo's home to receive his endorsement and watch his extraordinary documentary, America, Freedom to Fascism. During the last presidential election cycle, Shalene was honored with an invitation to personally meet and endorse Congressman Ron Paul. It was due to her past political achievements that the National Constitution Party leaders and members requested her to run for governor in California as an American independent. Shalene accepted the challenge in order to help restore our ailing state that has been hurt by special interest groups and big government. She will be speaking on the role of a constitutional governor. All right, my pleasure to introduce the next speaker who uh, comes to us from Southern California. And I've heard nothing but good things about her. She's been talked about on KMJ Radio there in Fresno, California. I was at a big conference. I was invited to World Net Daily's conference in Miami, Florida last month. And there I sit and I come to the Constitution Party table in Florida. And there's a Shalene Nightingale button out there in Florida. So you, she is well known. Thank you. <laughs> Let's start with that. I mean, that is, to me, that's a qualification for government. Sorry. Let's have read it. Okay, you going to watch this one? Watch the other one? Uh, okay, we'll see. I don't want to spend a lot of time, uh, but she's, she's going to have a lot of good things to say. Help me welcome candidate for governor for the Constitution Party, Shalene Nightingale. Now, I know this doesn't really apply to 
many of you, because all of you are going to vote Constitution. But these seats should be filled up today, and they're not. So we're still not doing our job. The fact that, yes, I'm number one in the topics poll. If you go to topics.com, and no, we didn't create the poll. Somebody else did. We didn't even know about it. Somebody called us and said, you're number one in this poll. But we should be number one in every single poll. supposed to be there. We, re thank you. we recalled in our own state of California one governor only to get another one that brought us even higher taxes and regulations than the last one. We keep doing it to ourselves. I can't talk to you about a constitutional governor until we the people realize that it's our responsibility to get constitutional governors and elected officials into office. But unfortunately, far too many times, we go to the polls not as Americans. We go and we vote in fear. And I'm sorry, that's not American. Americans are known for a fighting, courageous spirit. We are known for being a beacon of freedom. It is not American to go to the polls and say, I'm voting the lesser of two evils. This is not a competition. This is not a game. We are fighting for the survival of our children, ourselves, and our nation. And unless we the people realize this is a battle, we're never going to take away and push away the tyranny and get our freedom back. I know that's a strong message, and I don't want any of you here to be upset with me, but I'm doing exactly what James Madison said to do, and that was to sound the alarm at the first experiment of our liberties. Well, I've been sounding this for over five years now, and sometimes I feel like, are, is anybody listening? You know, I got a phone call, I gotta tell you this. I've been an activist for a long time, and And he said, Shalene, I'm so proud of you. You know I've endorsed your campaign. He said, but I just received an email from somebody I consider a really strong patriot. And they wrote to me because they know we're really close friends. And they wanted me to call you on the phone and beg you to quit the gubernatorial race. Because they don't want Jerry Brown in. That's right. <laughs> I said, Jeff, you know me better than that. Not only am I not going to quit, I'm going to get out and I'm going to shout from the rooftops even louder about why I am going to continue to run for office and why we are not going to vote the lesser of two evils. And don't blame me, thank you. And don't blame me if I don't make your Jerry get into office. We the people have to start looking into the mirror. You know, it was back during the recall, and I remember this very clearly. We had Gray, da oh, Gray Davis, we had uh, Cruz Bustamante, and we had the Terminator, and we had Tom McClintock. I looked at all three, and I said, Tom McClintock is the constitutional candidate. He is the one that most adheres to my principles. Well, what did I do? I listened to other people. I listened, and I'm a, I'm a Christian, just so you know. I was listening to Christian talk radio, and they were telling me I needed to vote for evil. They wanted me to vote for evil. Well, I have to tell you, I gave 
gave into that tyranny. I gave into that fear. And I voted for Arnold. Since that time, when I've been out here campaigning, for every person who said, I wish I would have voted for Tom McClintock, he would have won. Yeah. He would have won. Yeah. So instead, we're reaping the repercussions of our own what we sowed. We have nobody to blame for the fact that we have the highest regulations in the entire country, that we have the highest corporate tax in the entire country, that we have the worst education system in the entire country, that we spend more, in fact billions of dollars more, than any other state when it comes to the welfare of illegal aliens. We also can't blame anyone for ourselves, for the fact that we are not only feeling insecure in our state, but the fact that they fear monger us by telling us our state is almost over. We're the eighth largest economy in the world. It's not that it's almost over. It's just that it's been grossly mismanaged and taken over by what I call status. Right now, we have eight days, I believe, or nine days before the election. Nine days. It's up to us to go out there and tell people that in nine days, we can either have liberty or we can have more tyranny. I'm not gonna stand up here and talk about the other candidates. That's not what I'm here to do. But you know, the Bible, and yes, I do say Bible when I speak, which of course is why I'm probably on every list that the government is watching me on. But as long as I still live in the United States of America, I'm gonna talk the way I want. Although I'm sure if a couple of you hosts were here, they would probably walk out on me right now for saying those words. Um, but the Bible says you will know them by the fruits of their tree. We have to look at each candidate. That's our responsibility to do. To look at them and say, are they we the people? Or are they Wall Street corporate candidates that don't even know what the Constitution states? How do you know that? Well, one, we can look at the money that they spend in elections. Remember what George Washington said. He said that the office, that when we read for office, it should never be for aristocrats. Those were his words. He didn't want to be another term. They, do you know that they wanted him to be a president for another term? And he said no, because it should not be about career politicians. It should not be about the elite. It shouldn't be for people just with money. It should be we, the people, governing one another. The baker, the farmer, the doctor ones that need to run this country. But yet, look where we are. We've allowed big money to take over. We've allowed career politicians to take over. And then we wonder why we have so much tyranny. We wonder why we don't have the freedoms and the rights and why we have to come here to listen to people like Sheriff Richard Mack and others to talk to us about the Constitution and how we can get out of this mess. We did that. I'm guilty of it. So I'm not chastising anybody here. Maybe none of you ever done it. I have done it. So how are we going to get out of this? Besides looking at the fruits of their trees and the money that they spend, how are they representing you? Is it free and equal elections? I am sure that I'm confident that many of you here today have never even heard of me before. And I can assure you it's not because I'm not out there campaigning. In fact, I guarantee I'm really one of the only six gubernatorial candidates that's gone all the way up and down the state from Humboldt County all the way to the border and everywhere in between. I have done that. I'm sleeping, last night I slept two and a half hours. Some nights, if I'm lucky, I might sleep five. Because I'm working every moment as if this is a battle. Because that is what it is. It's a battle for my child's future. It's a battle for my mother. May she rest, her, uh, she's up in heaven right now. Her family were legal immigrants. They escaped Mussolini to come over here. She, her family knew what the price of freedom was. I'm also fighting for my father. My father, who's a military veteran. I didn't even know my father the first few years of my life because he was over in another country fighting a war. 
course, I believe it was an unconstitutional war. That's a whole other matter. <laughs> I support our troops, obviously. I'm a military brat. But the point is, I am not going to let this country go for those who have shed blood for us. I'm not going to let this country go for our founding fathers, George Washington. How many battles did he fight before he finally won? We can't just hand over our country to these states. Grassroots has to come into play. Take a page out of the Founding Fathers books. They were grassroots. 
grassroots individuals. We need to be knocking on doors. We need to be sacrificing our own dollars. Go to our website and print out flyers and take them and pass them around. And do not give up. We are Americans. We do not give up. So once we do that, we can start electing constitutionally minded candidates. So now let's talk about what is a constitution minded elected official? Not just governor, but elected official. Well, one, it's one who's read the constitution. <laughs> you know, I gotta tell a joke. How about Nancy Pelosi? Uh, by the way, I doubt she's ever read the constitution. But how about her, well, we need to pass the health care bill in order to find out what's in it. <laughs> Are you got to be kidding me? That's their mentality, though. Remember what a uh, certain former president said, which I'm sorry, I voted for him once and I apologize. Um, he said that the Constitution was just a blank piece of paper. That's how they think. Isn't it Obama who said that Constitution was pretty much all irrelevant and it was a living document? No, it's not like the Bible. It is a document written for that time for permanent record. It's about our inalienable rights. Period. Yeah. We also need to, and then we're going to governor, when you elect people for governor, have they read the California State Constitution? I can tell you I have, and I have it on the desktop of my computer. How many of you here, by the way, have read the California Constitution, and please tell the truth. Okay, all right, come on. This is a liberty-minded conference, and you haven't read the California Constitution? All right, you know what your homework assignment is. Go home and read it. It's a lot larger than the U.S. Constitution, but trust me, you're going to want to know what's in it so that you know all the unconstitutional laws that are being passed in our state. And then you would also find out that we have somebody running for office who shouldn't because in our state constitution, we're only supposed to run for two terms. You would also find out that we're supposed to have this California state thing, which I advocate. You would also find out that we, the governor, the governor has the executive power in the state and to enforce all the laws. You would also find out that the governor is supposed to have a militia that he or she oversees in the state. And of course, if we said that on MSNBC, they'd be calling us right-wing terrorists. Um, we'd, all, we'd have to say, well, this is in our California state constitution. Maybe perhaps you should not live there. That is what a governor is supposed to do in the state of California. So let me tell you a little bit about what I'm going to do if elected as your constitutional governor. First of all, I work for you. You are my boss, exactly the way that it's supposed to be. Second of all, I'm sorry, I'm putting our militia, our California State Military Reserve, armed on the border. Yeah. I'm not a fan of a welfare nanny state, all right? But I do believe people need help. I hate these words, homeless veteran, that should never be put together. Um, senior citizens, disabled, and gosh darn, there are people sometimes that need extra help. But we are a working people. We are a working nation. And we need to get people back out there not relying on big government. So let's try to get rid of a welfare nanny state. But where I will start are illegal aliens who are spending, well, we're spending over $21 billion of our taxpayer money on their benefits. <laughs> I agree. Of course, don't say that too much because you might end up on the SPLC list like I have for this stance. And Richard, you're there as well. I'm in good company. Dr. Ron Paul, Chuck Baldwin, Sheriff Richard Beck, I'm in really good company. Apparently, if you say the words liberty and freedom, you'll end up on their list. Uh, or Red, Ray and Rachel Maddow might say something about you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the other thing that we need to do is we need to get the federal government out I am very much a 10th Amendment Center activist. I signed, I signed their pledge clear back in the primary. In fact, I was the only gubernatorial candidate who did sign their pledge. And I will adhere to that. I applaud Jan Brewer. I, I don't know her, but I do know uh, Russell Pierce, who wrote the SB 1070 bill. I applaud them. Whether you agree with it in the liberty-minded individuals, I know where people are divided on this. I don't care. The point is, is they're enacting 
their state rights and doing what they felt was best for the residents of Arizona to protect them. Because what does it say in the Constitution? We are to protect your life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that also includes uh, protecting your property and to protect you against an invasion. That's the limited role of government, by the way. And most people don't know that. I've got to tell you a little story. I'm off track because I've got to tell you the story. I just, for the past 18 months, I've been speaking all up and down the state. I've never been booed. I was finally booed a week ago at UCLA. And it was after I said the words liberty and freedom. Liberty and freedom, boo. So you know what I did? I called the kid at, on the stage. I said, you, up here, right now, tell me why you booed freedom and liberty. To make a long story short, he's indoctrinated. He has no idea what he is talking about. But that is how they're viewing you. Remember what, remember what John Adams said. In order for us to maintain liberty and freedom and to have a constitutional country, we were to train our children in the principles of freedom and liberty, which of course, Ronald Reagan echoed that sentiment in his farewell address speech when he said that we wanted to keep patriotism in this country, we had to teach our children the principles of being an American. Well, the other side knows that just as well. William Ayers has stated, he stated back in the radical 60s, that in order to have their new society, remember that word new, new world order, new international order, new California, that's their buzzword, new. In order to have their new society, they needed to have a communist revolution, and one of their steps was to mold young minds. You know, it's like Tom DeCredo and I, Tom DeCredo endorsed our campaign. He's running for governor under this, under this same ticket now. He left the Republican Party. And we were speaking at the same event. He knew I was a Ron Paul supporter. I, look, I, I'm friends with Tom. I did support him in the beginning, but when he left, it was Dr. Ron Paul all the way. Anyway, he said there was a lot of talk about a revolution during the presidential election. I hate to tell you this. There was already a revolution, and they won. They're in control. They're in power. And they want to keep that power. Again, like I said earlier, this is a battle. We are at war. That's right. In order to win this war, we have to be soldiers. And we cannot fear. And we have to do what is right, not what other people want us to do. Because all that's going to do is keep moving us further and further along on that communist track. And if you don't believe it, talk to some legal immigrants from communist countries. They'll let you know. So another thing that I'm going to do is to make sure in uh, education, because that's where they're indoctrinating them and turning us into this communist nation, we have to take the federal government out of our school system, and we must give that to the, the teacher, that public employee teachers union out of the way, and we must give education back to the teachers and the parents. Yeah. I'm a homeschooling mother. choice, be a tax credit or voucher to do so. And we need to add back, instead of political agendas, we need vocational tracks and art tracks. Because not everybody wants to go on to college. We want to reduce the flunk out rate, that's the way to do it. And let's talk about the budget here and economy here. What they're doing is unconstitutional. First of all, the Federal Reserve System, like I said earlier, that's a banking cartel. And I don't even want to be under it. Do you know what our state constitution, it wants us to sound money solution. Yes. So that's what I advocate. I you know when the federal government says, well, you know, Shalene, if that's what you're going to do, we're not going to give you this. I'll say, fine, we have our own banking system over here. I don't need yeah. you. Okay. 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 We have the money here. It's just we have all these unconstitutional people in office that we've endorsed or that we've voted for. Do you know off the, on the list of um, a National Socialist list, about a third of our elected officials in the state are socialists? Should be a surprise. Pete Stark's one of them. Shouldn't surprise you. That legislature needs to go part time. We need to take the books out of their hands, audit it, and tell them no more unconstitutional spending. And we need to remove the special interest lobbyists out the door. Who needs to be lobbying is you. You the private citizen. I've done it. I went to D.C. I've been to Sacramento. That's what we need.
need to do. Now I'm going to close this, and as I close this, I have to invite you to be part of the process, part of the solution, no longer part of the problem. I don't know what's going to happen November 2nd. I personally have a lot of faith, and I believe God moves mountains. We don't know, and nobody can tell me I'm going to lose. Oh, really? Are you God, or do you have a crystal ball? We're only going to lose if the people give in to fear. And if we do give in to fear, I need to tell you this as I close. This is the last time in an election you get to exercise your freedom. We passed Prop 14. And I know it was sold as freedom and liberty. Arnold Schwarzenegger, by the way, helped fund that. It's not about freedom and liberty. They just took freedom and liberty away from you. So the top two from the primary, well, you want to vote your lesser of two evils? Well, now you'll have your chance from here on out. So if you want that changed, I really highly recommend that you become courageous Americans with faith and have your boots on the ground. And for the next nine days, you get out there as if your life depends on it and knock on some doors. That's what a constitutional governor candidate would tell you to do. And I can assure you, you're the ones when I'm elected that will keep me accountable. Um, you need, that's why I answer all my phone calls and most all my emails, because I want you to know how I will run the state with you, not against you. I thank you for listening to me. I thank you for letting me be here. God bless America and long live freedom and liberty as long as we will fight for it.